Explain why truck drivers matter in, in a different way from uh, shortages in other workers, like construction workers. Well, freight, uh, truck drivers move about 70% of freight in the U.S. around the country. So without trucks, America doesn't move almost literally. And what we saw in Q4 earnings reports, what we've seen so far this earnings season, is that freight really bit into the profit margins of a lot of companies. And so we saw it everywhere from Clorox to Hershey to Cisco, the, the food services company. And so we're seeing, you know, it's not just a theoretical, you know, maybe we can't find the workers. We're seeing it in terms of companies' bottom lines. And that really poses a threat if we're trying to grow at 3% for the, for the next several years. Connor, uh, tell us a little bit more specifically about what you learned from reading through conference calls where they cited, very many uh, CEOs cited the cost of freight. Uh, how big of an issue is this right now? Right now, it's sort of, we're sort of, I, I would say it's more, the, we can handle it right now. It's just that if we keep trying to grow, the number of truck drivers isn't increasing at all. So we need sort of massive productivity growth or another way of moving freight, let's say by rail, just to continue to, to handle the growth that we're seeing in the economy right now. So are self-driving trucks going to be mm. the uh, savior? I mean, you hear about this. I think Tesla is working on it, others. Is that what's going to save this economy? I mean, they're coming someday. We know that for sure. But I think it's every, everybody who's working on it has an incentive to tell you they're coming tomorrow when it might be five or ten years from now. And so in terms of mm. 2018, 2019, probably 2020, we're just not going to see any help in the near, in the near term. Kind of forgive the stupid question, but why? What's going on here? Because the construction industry, and you use this example, has been complaining about not being able to find enough people, and yet you look at the stats and eventually they do find the right people, and there is some kind of supply and demand, a pull me, push you going on there, and wages are just like any normal market. And yet, as you're pointing out, actually hiring for, for um, freight and for, for truck drivers simply hasn't moved for the last, what, two and a half years. Why the struggle here and perhaps not in other similar-ish areas? Well, I think it gets to the nature of what a truck driving job is all about. You're away from home a lot, and so that's sort of not something that a lot of people want to do. I, I actually got a lot of truck drivers responding to a column I wrote about this, and they were saying that even though freight rates are going up, pay has not. So that kind of mirrors things we're hearing in the broader economy where the sort of freight and brokerage companies aren't passing on those price increases to the drivers. So it, it is a wage issue to some extent. And then one factor that goes into play in a couple months is the electronic logging new regulation that some people have been talking about mm. where you no longer can write your hours on paper. Um, you, you now have to do it electronically, which sort of caps how much you can drive. And, ah. you know, if, if you think about it, if you're, if you're stuck delayed by 30 minutes and then all of a sudden you're 15 minutes from your destination, the, the computer says that you're in violation, even though, and so you're stuck waiting somewhere overnight, and it, it's just kind of a disaster for a lot of truckers. That makes it a lot less appealing for anyone else to want this job as well. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Connor, just talk about the broader growth spillovers that we could see as a result of this. I mean, you make the great point about all this potential investment we've got coming from corporates. You want to build a factory somewhere, but if you can't get the logistics in line, perhaps you make different choices, perhaps you don't invest at all. Right. So it's sort of think about a ride sharing service on New Year's Eve where, you know, for a while things get a little bit more expensive, then they get a lot more expensive and then there are just no cars. And that's kind of, I think, what we could see in the extreme case here where, you know, Walmart and big box stores and large companies are going to pay up to ensure that they get the trucks they need. But it's the sort of smaller companies that mm. rely on the, the sort of spot market that's more volatile that all of a sudden might say we need a truck. And then they're saying companies are saying pay up 50 percent and you can't get a truck. And it just kind of destroys their business model.